Hello and welcome to another Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a blue-green Defender deck featuring the Pride of Hull Clade as our commander, voted on by my supporters on Patreon. This was originally going to be a standard deck, but uh, after trying and failing a bunch in standard, I decided to move to Brawl instead. And this is a great commander, as it gets an X mana discount, where X is the total toughness of creatures we control. So even in the late game, if our opponent maybe removed our commander a few times, we can still discount the commander tax as well and still potentially play this for just a single green mana and then it's a 215 defender so that's a lot of toughness and for two and double blue until end of turn a creature we control gets plus one power and says when it deals comma damage to a player draw cards equal to its toughness and it can also attack as though it didn't have defender so we can target the pride itself and then attack for three damage and then draw 15 cards if we can connect with the opponent so that's the dream drawing 15 plus cards with pride of hulk Lade. now how do we get there of course we need some high toughness creatures to enable it and then ideally we also need a bit of evasion so we can make sure that the pride can actually hit the opponent so i've split up the deck into a few different categories starting with the evasion category enchantments and equipment that can give flying or can make our creature unblockable so we can actually hit the opponent then we've got a bunch of mana acceleration. A lot of these are also creatures with a decent amount of toughness, so they both help us ramp as well as discounting our commander. And then we've got a whole category just dedicated to high toughness creatures. One mana O5s are perfect for enabling our commander. And then later in the game, they might actually turn into some threats as well, as we've got a small category of cards that can let creatures deal damage equal to their toughness. So these are also very important and can potentially win the game with our prime once we get to deal 15 damage. Then we've got a few Planeswalkers that also synergize well in our deck, since our deck is very good at protecting Planeswalkers, since we're putting so many high toughness creatures on the battlefield. And then finally we've got the Miscellaneous section, where we've got maybe some ways so we don't have to discard to hand size. Triskai Deca file can also be a fun alternate win condition if we manage to hit the opponent with our commander. And then some other effects that synergize with high toughness. So now let's go for the deeper dive, starting with the evasion category, where at one mana we have arcane flights and fly. These are both pretty similar. Cliffhaven, Kite Sail, a one mana equipment that we get to attach to a creature right away. And the cheaper these effects are, the better, because that will often allow us to activate Pride and give it evasion in the same turn, ideally on turn four already, since we can often play our commander on turn three. And then if we also have a bit of mana acceleration in the mix, we'll have five mana on turn four to both play one of these and activate the Pride's ability, so we can immediately draw 15 on turn four. Then Ether Tunnel gives one extra power and makes it unblockable. Cartouche of Knowledge as well as Rune of Flight both replace themselves and give our creature flying. Then we've got Security Bypass making it unblockable if it's the only creature attacking. And then a Faith Flight is a very nice new addition as well. Can both give plus one power and flying, but can also be flashed in to give our creature hexproof until end of turn. So that can be a way to maybe protect our creature from insta speed removal. And then we've got Key to the City, which we can tap to make a creature unblockable if we discard a card. And a Wedding Invitation draws when it enters and can be sacrificed to make a creature unblockable for a turn. And then in our mana base, there's Access Tunnel, which we can also activate to make our pride unblockable. Then we've got Arboreal Grazer for a bit of ramp and three extra toughness. And then a Delighted Halfling is very nice here as well. Two toughness and taps for mana can even make our commander uncounterable. And then I'm still including Elvish Mystic and Lenor Elves, since they're just very nice to have on turn one, even though they don't add a ton of toughness to the deck. We do have Sentinel, two toughness, but need to tap another untapped creature so it can make mana. Same with the Caretaker. This one's very synergistic at three toughness and the same effect as the Sentinel. And then at 2 mana, there's the Loam Speaker, which now has also been updated to make a creature into a 4-4 until end of turn instead of a 3-3. Three, three. We've got the Scrap Gorger, which can also exile cards from graveyards. Druid of the Cowl, another 1-3 that taps for green, same as the Fawn. And then the Leafkin Druid can potentially make double green if we have enough creatures on the battlefield. And then Explore and Grow Spiral let us play an extra land and draw a card. So they essentially only cost us one mana, so they're still perfect for setting up that turn four attack and draw cards. And then Arcane Signet can also immediately tap for mana. And then last but certainly not least is Overgrown Battlement, tapping for green for each creature we control with Defender. So that can potentially make a lot of mana for us as well. And then in our high toughness section, we just want cheap creatures that add a lot of toughness to discount our commander, such as our turtle. 
got the embodiment of spring, three toughness, but can also maybe help us ramp if we sacrifice it. Glistener Seer lets us scry to improve our draw steps early on. The zombie lets us surveil if we tap three untapped creatures, so that's more card selection. And then we've got a whole bunch of one mana O fours, Secret Keeper, Secret Door, the Crab, Wall of Runes lets us scry one when it enters, and the excavated wall. And then at 2 mana we're usually looking for at least 5 toughness, the Savant actually has 6 toughness, Ledger Shredder lets us connive so that can also increase its toughness if we put some plus 1 counters on it, we've got the Phantasm 05, Riptide Turtle 05 that we can play at instant speed, and Wall of Mist another 2 mana 05, and then both Wall of Blossoms and Carbon Carotid draw a card when they enter, and a Crashing Drawbridge can tap to give our team haste, and then the Raging Isle at 17 toughness is also more of a fun off, not really necessary. And Shield Wall Sentinel can search up any defender in our deck when it enters. And that might get our Walking Bulwark, a 1 mana 03 defender. And for 2 mana, a creature we control with defender can attack as though it didn't have defender and deals damage equal to its toughness rather than its power. And then it also gains haste. So that's also perfect to maybe activate our Pride to just deal 15 damage as opposed to activating it for 4 mana to draw a few cards. So the cheaper activation can be useful. Then there's Assault Formation, one of the best cards in the deck, as now all our creatures can deal damage equal to their toughness rather than their power, and just a single green to let a defender attack can also increase toughness even further. Streetwise Negotiator has the same effect stapled onto backup, so it's only a one-time deal. And then the Bedrock Tortoise, another all-star, letting all our creatures deal damage equal to their toughness, does not let defenders attack, so that's the one caveat, but still lets our pride potentially deal 15 if we activate it, and then also gives our creatures hexproof during our turn. And then our Planeswalkers include Teferi, Temporal Pilgrim, which has excellent synergy with our commander if we manage to draw 15 cards, as we now add 15 loyalty to Teferi to maybe set up the ultimate, or we can start growing a spirit token. And then there's Vivian Reed, which can maybe find more creatures or deal with artifacts, enchantments, or flyers. And then we've got Vivian Monster's Advocate, which has pretty good synergy with a commander that costs 11 mana, since we can minus 2, then cast our commander, and then search up basically any creature in our deck, including our Bedrock Tortoise, which will be pretty nice alongside it. And then in our miscellaneous section, there's a wizard class, so we have no maximum hand size, since if we draw 15, it would be a shame if we have to discard half of them. And then we can also potentially level it up and get some extra plus one counters whenever we draw. There's training grounds to discount our activated abilities, so we can activate our commander for just double blue, and there's some other activated abilities throughout. Triskai Decafile is also a very nice alternate win condition. If we've got 13 cards in hand in our upkeep, then we win the game. So we just need to draw 15, play a few cards in our second main phase, and be left with 13. A Boon of Boseju can give one of our creatures plus 11, plus 11, and we get to untap it as long as we control our commander when we cast it. The Visionary Stitcher can sacrifice creatures to make large zombie tokens with power toughness equal to the sacrifice creature's toughness. So sacrifice pride and we get to make a 15-15 zombie that will also have flying. And then the Towering Titan will enter the battlefield with a number of plus one plus one counters equal to the total toughness we have on the battlefield. So that can also quickly get out of hand, especially with our pride on the battlefield. And then we can sacrifice a defender to give our team a trample until end of turn. Then there's Last March of the Ends, which is a bit expensive to cast at 8 mana, but we have a bit of ramp to support it. And then we get to draw cards equal to the highest toughness among creatures we control, so that's another way to draw 15 cards if we don't get there with the ability. And then we can put all creatures from our hand onto the battlefield. And finally, Court of Calling, we can also convoke thanks to our many cheap creatures, and maybe search up some of our key one-offs, such as the Bedrock Tortoise. And then our mana base, just uh, lots of mana fixing. We mentioned access tunnel. And then the fetch lands can now not only get breeding pool, but also the new hedge maze, which counts as a forest and an island, and lets us surveil one when it enters for a bit more card selection. And then uh, no creature lane, since we don't really have time for it. We've got other activated abilities we need to spend our mana on, but uh, Soaring City and Boseju are kind of a free roll. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and facing CDC, a graveyard deck. So we've got Battlements, no one mana creature, but yeah, could still work out with Battlements adding extra mana. And then we've got multiple ways to give evasion. We can fetch our new tap land that lets us surveil, and maybe keep another defender on top. So get our hedge maze. 
And don't think we need another island. Alright, turtle's not bad. So, let's see, next turn we can play a turtle. This is not a defender, but uh, it does add 5 toughness, so then we can play a 2 mana pride. Let's see, can I even play Ledger Shredder first? I think so. So yeah, play Shredder. Play Turtle. And then probably don't need Fly anymore. Although it is a 1 mana enchantment as opposed to a 2 mana one. Yeah, maybe get rid of the Wedding Invitation then. Keep the enchantments. Yeah, I can fly plus activate pride. Opponent taps out for Sidisi. And yeah, we get to connect with pride. I guess we can go Tomb of Annihilation. And then with our remaining mana, play Lanor Elves. Could have maybe attacked before playing my land, in case we uh, drew our uh, Reliquary Tower so we don't have to discard to hand size. Now I definitely want to discard a non-land card, make it grow spiral. And then keep seven cards. The fairies, one of them. Keep a security bypass. A land. Turtle. Signet. Maybe a sentinel and a zombie. Yeah, looks fine. CDC attacks. Can soak that up. And World Shapers next. Couple lands in Graveyard, Spider Spawning, they can eventually flash back, which would get in the way of our pride. But we've got to bypass. So let's see here. Do I have the mana to play Teferi and activate? We have two defenders now. So I think we're still one mana short. So maybe this turn we just kind of set up with Teferi. And then next turn we can go for the ultimates. So yeah, play zombie, that's essentially free. And then maybe go with Signet. Connive. Rune of Flight is back, don't really need it. Play Teferi. Draw card. And play Druid. Can potentially double block CDC now. Then we can surveil with a zombie. Fae Flight, I guess, could be okay if we want to play around instant speed removal next turn. In case our opponent waits for us to activate. Okay, Altar of Dementia. Could have been pretty good with CDC still on the battlefield, but also a way to sack World Shaper, get all those lanes back, and then uh, set up a big spider spawning next turn, I guess. But in the meantime, we can activate Pride. Attack. And 
and then see what we pick up. New opponent had a Terra Sunder on fly. That I cannot protect with Faith Flight, I guess. But we can give it flying. So that still works. Maybe should have kept more blue mana available here. Alright, Teferi gets to gain a ton of loyalty. And what else did we find? Reliquary Tower I can still play. That can cast Bulwark. And, uh, let's see. Riptide Turtle can go. Negotiator can help us set up lethal next turn, so I may as well ultimate the fairy. Can potentially do so again. And uh, what else? Assault formation also potentially presents lethal next turn. Still have a bit of mana left. Play a key to the city. Alright. Your opponent has something like a River's Rebuke, they can send everything packing. This looks like a overloaded Cyclonic Rift. So in that case I want to just draw a card before they overload Cyclonic Rift. Find Wizard class. So yeah, I don't want to cast anything before attacking. And then let's see, what's the best sequence of events? Make a bunch of mana can uh, just activate Assault Formation here. And go to Attackers. Opponent's gonna Overload. And we're gonna pick everything up. I don't think there's anything I can really do at instant speed to Use up my mana. Okay, let's rebuild. Starting with probably a land arcane signet. Wanna deploy our battlement as quickly as possible as well. We can explore, play an extra land. Luckily still have our Reliquary Tower, so we don't have to discard. And then... Uh, deploy a few more Elves. There might have been a way for me to redeploy Pride. And then next turn, attack for lethal. But I'm not too worried. Yeah, I guess with a turtle we could have discounted pride quite a bit. And then still cast it. Izoni's not bad. Plenty of cards in graveyard to make use of. So we will need that unblockable effect from Key to the City, for instance. Okay, so now I wanna play out as many defenders as possible before tapping Battlement. Drawbridge is pretty nice as well. Any other defenders? Bulwark. So we can play one mana Pride. And then Towering Titan's pretty fun too here. Can maybe increase our toughness first. Want to keep Faith Flight available if possible. Yeah, I guess we can play Turtle first, too. Okay. That leaves Flight available. And then uh, maybe play Assault Formation as well. Okay, that's good enough.
Our opponent knows about Key to the City. They know about Fae Flight. So we should have most angles covered. There's a flashback spider spawning, make lots of spiders, and a palantir. Okay, bonus tapped out. We can make pride unblockable. And I guess we can uh, fly the towering titan for fun. I guess Towering Titan can do the honors here. Sweet. Attack you for 39. Opponents grabbing their reach creatures. I guess they can gain a bit of life with Izoni. But not enough to survive. Opponent milled Wander, so their entire team flies. So it kind of shows the importance of having some unblockable effects in addition to flying. GG's. And our opponent explodes. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Kozilek, the Great Distortion. So not a deck known for having a lot of early removal, but once they get Kozilek down, they can make a life very difficult. Our hands is not bad. Embodiments plus drawbridge give us a 7 mana discount. We'd still need to draw one other creature to play Pride on turn 3. And then Arcane Flight for Evasion. And eventually Towering Titan with Haste of Drawbridge wouldn't be bad either. Okay, now we can play... A Druid of the Cowl on 2, and then Drawbridge plus Pride on 3, I believe. Blast Zone could potentially disrupt us. If they blow it up, they can get rid of Arcane Flight. Opponent off to a nice start. 2 mana ramp card into a 4 mana key to the Archive. And this could get all sorts of effects. So that also includes sweepers like Day of Judgment. But I can't really play around it. So yeah, stick to the plan, I think. Drawbridge. And then I can even play Signets into Pride. And then next turn we could Arcane Flight and activate Pride's ability. No Deo Judgment, that's good. Now let's see, what if I activate Pride? I guess since our opponent doesn't have any blockers, we don't need Arcane Flight. And then try to win with Triskai Deca file. That could be funny. So we'll start here. I guess our opponent does have a Blink Moth Nexus that could chum block. But uh, I guess we set them back on a land if they do. Opponent's got a Liberator instead. Okay, so I guess I can jump. Arcane Flight wouldn't have helped. And that's going to be it for now. So not the most exciting turn. Possible I was still better off putting Arcane Flight on Pride, just so it doesn't get countered if they play Kozilek. But they're still a couple lands away from casting it. Burnished Heart will get there next turn. But yeah, they still have Blast Zone available and Blink Moth Nexus. So this is kind of annoying since we won't be able to 
draw our cards with pride. So I guess we need to kind of set up for next turn maybe. And just go a Leaf Kindred. Lenor Elves, we can give them haste so they can immediately tap for mana. We can still Arcane Flight here, but uh, the problem is if our opponent does blow a Blast Zone, then we're not going to have a reliable way of connecting with Pride once Kozilek comes down. So kind of a tough one here. So play Triskai Decafile. And then I guess at this point sacrifice embodiments. Okay. And that's it for now. Opponent sacrifices burnished heart. And then next turn we'll maybe cast our Towering Titan and give it haste. Assuming they don't have a 6 drop in hand to counter it. But this is also finally our window to connect with Pride. So let's see if they have a 1 mana card to counter Pride. It's not very likely. So that works. So now we can potentially win with Triskai Deca file instead. So I'm going to draw 16 here. So we'll have 18 cards in hand. So 18 cards, I need to play 5 out if possible. So we can play a Scrap Gorger, give that haste with a drawbridge. So currently at 17 cards, need to play 4 more. 16. 15. And then give haste, play assault formation, and then channel Boseju. Opponent is going to counter assault formation, that's fine. So just to double check here 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Looks like Counterspell's the card they got off uh, Key to the Archive. And Boseju is very effective in this matchup, since the opponent cannot get their wastes off Boseju's ability. That's an interaction I found out the hard way, and getting to see it in action here. So yeah, everything is in place to win with Triskai Decafile in our upkeep. Oh no, our opponent's got a Meteor Golem to blow it up. So we won't win the game with Triskai Dekai file, but we're still in a pretty good position to win regardless. Since we can Court of Calling to get our uh, Tortoise, which will let us deal a lot of damage. And then of course there's Towering Titan as well. So let's say we start with Towering Titan, see if that resolves. It does. So we can give that haste with Drawbridge. Maybe play Training Grounds. Maybe should have uh, tapped more green mana so we keep more blue for our Pride activation. Although I can maybe explore Plain Island and then we still have double blue to activate Pride. And uh, yeah, that should do it. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing this card. And uh, we've got a Keeper, I think. Turn 1 Sentinel lets me go a Leafkin plus Wall of Runes on 2. And then we should be able to play our Commander on 3. And make it unblockable. And Red-Green's not gonna have too many answers to a 15 toughness creature. 
Ooh, I see. Opponent uh, Slime Against Humanity deck. So it's gonna be an interesting battle. I think Leafkin still over Riptide Turtle, although that's also an option. But Leafkin will make a mana for us next turn. So we should be able to play Turtle before playing Pride. And then Teferi... Isn't a bad follow-up. Can maybe try and play Teferi before hitting the opponent and drawing 15. And for now, we can block opponent discarding a couple slimes, so we can see the combo here. So, yeah, I think for now still a Riptide Turtle first. Play our pride. And then I may as well Aether Tunnel right away. Save us the mana next turn. And there's the first slime against humanity, 7-7. Seven, seven. Yeah, I mean, I'm not opposed to playing Teferi here, and then we should be able to set up the ultimate pretty easily. Just wait a turn. I think we just draw cards, since if I minus, we might put Teferi in range of a burn spell. Even though our opponent doesn't seem to have many of those. And then we can play our Triskai Decafile. Could also be an alternate win condition here. Interestingly enough. So this checks at the beginning of our upkeep. So draw 15 and then try to play something out. So we end up with 13 cards. Opponent just making a large ooze. And Vivian's not bad either, but uh, we've got other plans for the turn. Could also minus the fairy here, or we can go for an ultimate. I guess the ultimate is the safest play, although our opponent might concede before we win with Triskai Decafile. So we have 16 cards in hand at the moment, I believe. So I guess we'll start with an ultimate. So we should now have 17 cards in hand, which means if I play our Boreal Grazer, put a land in, I can play another land, and then we just need to cast one more spell to be down to 13 cards. So yeah, let me double check here. 3, 6, 9, 12. So yeah, we gotta play one more spell. Maybe go for the crab here. And uh, yeah, our opponent concedes, so sadly don't get to see the Triskai Deca file win the game, but there's no special animation, so we didn't miss out on much. And then uh, next turn we could also maybe cast our last March of the Ends to draw even more if we wanted to. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand, facing Etrata Assassins. We've got some early creatures, and then two ways of granting evasion. Faith Light can also protect our commander, perhaps. So ideally we find, like, one more high toughness creature along the way. Ripper is an assassin, so great synergy with Etrata. Don't want to block a 1-1 death touch, and then they get to cloak their uh, top card right away. So next turn we can keep up a bunch of instant speed cards. If we draw a one mana creature I could grow spiral and still play it. A loam speaker, also tempting. Yeah, I guess we can play loam speaker which could technically trade for ripper. Although I'm probably more interested in keeping it around since we can ignore the cloaked creatures by just uh, making our pride unblockable. Yeah, 
Yeah, I guess it's cloak our top card and not theirs. Either way, we can now play Turtle, Grow Spiral, and then still play Pride. And Assault Formation was also a very nice pickup. All the Walking Bulwark already kind of has that ability covered. Go for the throw, it answers Pride, that's fine, can replay it pretty easily. And then still have Fae Flight for protection. Alright, never mind, if they take out our turtle, it becomes a lot harder. So yeah, it's not looking great anymore. Could have tried to slow roll some of our creatures to keep up Fae Flight instead. If I activate a Loam Speaker's ability, let's see. Make a 4-4. Four, four. Discount this by 4. Then, yeah, I guess we can play it. So, pretty interesting synergy here. Don't really want to attack. All right, hopefully they're out of removal now. And birthday escape. This is now a ring bearer. And a thought sees. Okay, at least we've got redundant evasive abilities. Takes assault formation. So I do have the mana to play key to the city and activate the pride's ability. We are taking a bit of a beating. Could trade Elvish Mystic for a Ripper. And then I would need to draw a land in order to set up our combo here. Now let's just take it. Ether Tunnel, maybe a better long term investment. Could also just try and set up lethal by activating the bulwark, and then next turn we can hit for another 15. And that does leave Faith Light available for protection. Yeah, I guess that's the safer play. As opposed to drawing 15, which admittedly is more fun. But yeah, now we can protect Pride. Or Bulwark, if they try and take that out instead. Opponent wanted to steal our commander. Yeah, that would have been pretty effective. So it now has Hexproof. Opponent's tapped out. And next turn we get to do the same. We're at 8. So yeah, pretty close game. Our opponent was also going off. And then we could both activate Bulwark and activate the prize ability for uh, maximum damage and card draw. So we technically get to draw 15 here, but uh, sadly don't get to see those cards. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play and we've got what looks like a keepable hand. Opponent on a black-white sacrifice deck with Bartolome and Lurus as companion. So, yeah, they're probably going to have a bit of removal. For now, play Crab. And next turn, I can Grow Spiral, play Embodiments, and set up Pride on 3. Opponent gets a bit of information with Mishra's Bobble. And then we could play Triskai Decafile and play one mana Pride and still Surveil with the Hedge Maze. Surveil feels a lot better than Scrying if we're about to shuffle our deck afterwards. Now we still need to find a way to give our uh, commander some evasion since our opponent can just chum block on the ground forever. 
So that's what we'll be prioritizing. Not super into playing the Phantasm right now. So we'll stick to the plan. Okay. So, looking for evasion. In the meantime, we can activate Triskai Deca file to draw, perhaps. And if they try to remove our commander, we can pretty easily replay it, as the commander attacks also scales with our toughness. Prowler, 1-1 one, one Death Touch, pretty good blocker. And take one from the Spirit. Alright, so Larder Zombie gives us a bit of Surveil. So let me fetch Breeding Pool, or Island could be good enough. I'll get Breeding Pool in case we need more green. And then I can Surveil before drawing, I guess we can do that at instant speed. Just pass the turn for now. And that auger, okay. No other zombies on the battlefield, so they're just gonna sack auger itself. And Call of the Ring, another card draw engine. Okay, I mean, so far our opponent's not doing anything too scary. And don't need Grazer, even though it would block the Spirit Token. And there we go, Faith Flight. So, I guess I'm a little bit short of Faith Flight and give our uh, ability to the pride. They do have a spirit token, so if they know about Fae Flight, they can keep the spirit back. But uh, let's see what else we can do. Sentinel can get another defender. I guess we can get the caretaker, which makes mana. So next turn we can go for it. That seems fine. Or I could just play Phantasm and then end of turn, flash in Fae Flight and then go for it. Uh, I don't mind getting the Caretaker. Puts more creatures on the battlefield as well. So we can surveil more with a zombie. But we can double check. Yeah, if we had an extra mana, I would definitely get the Battlement. Drawbridge isn't bad. Bulwark could also be useful. But Caretaker's probably the only way to guarantee that we can... Uh, both Fae Flight and Activate next turn. Although we're pretty likely to surveil into a land as well if we want to. So maybe getting the Bulwark was still fine. So this is now a Ring Bearer, can still block it. And then our goal might be to win with Triskai Decafile. With 13 cards in hand, opponent gets back on that auger. So we really want that spirit token to attack once again. If it stays back, we'll need to look for an unblockable effect instead. Okay, I'll say it. Okay, maybe give protection. And Dawn of a New Age to draw more cards. That's fine. Spirit token attacks. Yeah, I mean, I can block Bartolome here. It's possible our opponent's got a way to finish off a creature that's been dealt damage. But I don't really want to take 5 for no reason. Alright, so we'll get to Surveil.
Okay. So it's go time. Fae flights for starters. Hope there's no insta speed removal in response. If there is, we can at least replay our pride and then look for another evasion effect. But now it's got hexproof. So we are gonna connect. With Triskai Decafile, we have unlimited taint size. So it's still going to be a little tricky to get my hand down to 13 cards here. Since we're going to draw 15 here. And let's see. Could channel Boseju. Doesn't seem super important. So maybe a Wall of Runes. Okay. Pass a turn. Archivist is next. So we've got two potential paths to victory, one with Triskai Decafile, one just dealing damage. And uh, don't currently have a way to deal damage equal to a creature's toughness, which would help. We do have Vivian, can maybe blow up an enchantment. Opponent's gonna draw. They're maybe looking for answers to the Triskai file. With the invitation, we can potentially attack past the spirit token in case we want to draw even more cards. And our opponent explodes. All right, I guess drawing 15 was good enough. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Vraska, so black green death touch. And what do we think of our hand? So we've got two high toughness creatures bit of ramp and one way to make our commander unblockable. So yeah, this is keepable. Try to scry into another high toughness creature so we can hopefully play our pride on turn three already. And forest, I think we bottom. Signet can fix our colors. Okay, so next turn we can already cast it, but if we draw another creature we can probably still play it first. And there's another Death Touch creature. Okay, can play the Elvish Mystic, which will actually allow us to Next turn, play the Invitation and activate the ability here, so we can hopefully draw 15. Opponent taps out for Vraska. Normally I would be okay trading for the uh, Vampire and my Elvish Mystic, but we need it to set up our combo. Okay, so we'll stick to the plan. So activate the ability. A wedding invitation. And draw another 15 cards. And thanks to Reliquary Tower, we don't even need to discard to hand size here. All right, so our opponent explodes. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw and uh, Missing both early creatures as well as blue mana, so I'm gonna mulligan. This is much better. Still a little bit light on the initial creatures, but both Halfling and Loam Speaker also make mana, so maybe we'll ramp into a Towering Titan first. Opponent with a Virtue taking out Halfling. And uh, I'll play the Loam Speaker first since. 
there's no use for the mana from Arcane Signet. Alright, opponent's got a lot of removal. So that's gonna slow us down significantly. Play Secret Door. Don't think I want to enchant it. Sentinel, okay. So we're making a bit of progress. Next turn we can maybe cast our Pride. Never mind. Terra Sunder or Signet. And yeah, Boon doesn't really do anything for me right now. Opponent just with a very interaction heavy build of uh, Moldrotha. Caretaker does allow me to now play Pride. Question is, do I enchant it already? I guess we may as well, since next turn I might be short of both enchanting and activating otherwise. All right, so our opponent explodes. I guess uh, they didn't have any answers left. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing the Myco Tyrant, a graveyard deck. And uh, yeah, we've got a keeper. We've got some high toughness creatures. I will have to play a tapped maze, but uh, I'm going to prioritize playing Scrab Gorger on two. And then I would like to find a third land, so we don't need the crab. Well, we actually uh, drew both of our island forest cards, so foothills can only get basic forest, but that's fine. So next turn we should be able to play our pride if we go Savans plus Secret Keeper first. So let's see here. Get a forest. So we can play the Savans. And then now still play Secret Keeper, and then have a one mana Pride. All right. Now I'm gonna be a little bit short of activating Pride and putting Ether Tunnel on it, so we'll uh, have to wait and see. If they try to remove it, we can pretty easily replay by. Maybe even playing Caryatid first, since the commander attacks also gets discounted by the ability. Of course, instant speed removal is a bit more effective, since they can wait for me to activate and then uh, take it out. Opponent with a Bastion. That's fine. And a Sprout. So they can easily chum block Pride, so there's no point in activating it now. Instead, could just put the Ether Tunnel on it now. Could also play Caryatid, hope to draw a land and then still Ether Tunnel, but that seems kind of unnecessary. So let's just Ether Tunnel now. Hope they can't remove it. I guess that's kind of the drawback, as it would be better to hit my land drops. So with the embodiments, we can activate it to get a basic. Then I would still need to draw land in order to tunnel activate, which is the goal. Because if our opponent's holding removal, then Putting the tunnel on it now is pretty bad. So maybe it is just carry it to hope to draw lands, play embodiments. Alright. And then next turn with another land, we can both tunnel and activate. If not, we can activate the embodiment and get there on the following turn. Our defenses are set up at least, so we shouldn't take any combat damage. Our opponent's going to go wide with a Micro Tyrant. And an Opportunist. Luckily we can block their creatures without killing them. And Teferi. Teferi's nice too. Can try and set up a Teferi ultimate. And then by drawing we give ourselves 
a pretty good chance of just drawing a land for next turn. Okay, so we're all ready to go. Just to force them to tap out so we don't need to worry about any instant speed interaction. But uh, yeah, the Micro Tyrant probably wants a lot of permanent cards to function, so I don't expect too much instant speed removal. And to prevent triggering Morbid Opportunist, we don't want to actually take out their 1-1. One, one. Alright, Rune of Flight could also work. Opponent does have one card in hand, so that makes me a little bit nervous. I guess I'll start with a Rune of Flight instead of Ether Tunnel, in case a Flyer shows up in the future. Okay, activates. I guess I can even play Training Grounds first, since that'll give us a discount. Hit you for three, draw 15 cards. And then we can ultimate the fairy. Which should be pretty effective. I don't know about you, but I'm about we didn't draw anything particularly exciting. Busaichu may be an answer to an enchantment. But uh, yeah, our opponent has seen enough. Alright, so we got to see our High Toughness deck in action. And yeah, the Pride of the Whole Clade is a very fun commander, reminiscent of Emery in how it always gets a discount even with the commander attacks, so it's usually not too difficult to redeploy if our opponent just focuses on taking out our commander, but there are still some tough matchups out there if our opponent's backing a lot of sweeper effects, then if they deal with all our defenders it's going to be very hard to redeploy the Pride, and maybe some auras that can turn our commander into a 1-1 creature can be pretty hard for us to beat since we're kind of all in on our commander to win the game. But uh, yeah, it's a very fun commander, and I got to draw more cards in the last hour than I have in a very long time, so I can certainly recommend the deck if you liked the look of it. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.